So, in so far, we have found and we we have found and we have written polynomials when given zeros that were rational numbers. We have found and written polynomials when we were given zeros that were irrational numbers. In the last homework, we found and wrote polynomials when we had. Um, Oh, let's just do this. i, negative i, 1 minus i, 1 plus i. When we are given complex zeros, correct? Right? We talked about i last class period. Yes, uh, anybody? Yes? OK. So what Descartes' rule of sign says is, based on the equations, we can determine how many real positive and how many real negative and therefore how many complex zeros a function has without doing anything. So um, well, it's just a way from inspection. You guys can quickly, it's a good way to check your work. Um, and you might have an, a question that says, hey, to tell me how many complex, how many zeros, and so forth. Well, without doing all the math that we've done, which you guys know synthetic division sometimes can take a long time, right? without doing all the math, we can use Descartes' rule of science to answer a type of question like that. First of all. Based on the degree, we know how many zeros does this function have? Four. Four. OK. Now, these are all real, correct? Those are real numbers. You can plot those numbers on a number line, correct? These are complex. You cannot plot them on a real number line. You can plot them on a complex number line, but not a real number line. Yes? These are rational numbers. These are irrational. But they're both real, right? Some are negative, some are positive. Okay? Um, also, just to note, remember zero, remember complex zeros always come in their conjugate, right? They always come in pairs. Okay? So what Descartes' rule of sign says is I can determine the number of real positive zeros by the number of sign changes. Minus an even number. Kind of looks confusing. It's much easier just to do. So we start with positive x to the fourth. Then we go to negative x cubed. Do you guys see how it went from positive to negative? So I can have one positive real 0. Then I go from negative to positive. I can now have 2. And then over here, I have another positive change. Correct? So I have 3 real zeros, or minus an even number, which an even number is 2, I have 2. I'm sorry, 1. I can't subtract any other even. I can't subtract 2 from 1 again. So I even have the option of 3 or 1. Correct? Yes, Logan. I have a question. Um, how does it matter uh, what your subtract from Yeah, I mean, I, I can't subtract any larger number than 2. But if you had like 10. Your, it would be 10, 8, 6, 4, 2, 0. Okay. What is that? Yeah, what would that be? Uh, I'm going to explain. Uh, let me, I'm not done yet. That's the real positive. What about the real negative zeros? It's the same thing, but now we need to evaluate for f of negative x. So now we're going to plug in f of negative x. You guys, I think, want me to plug that in. so. Actually, I don't got time. I got to move on. So negative x to the fourth is just going to give you a positive x to the fourth. Negative x cubed is a negative x cubed times negative 5 is going to be a positive 5x cubed. This gives me a positive x squared minus 3x minus 2. Does everybody see what I did? I just plugged in negative x and then simplified. Anytime you have a negative number raised to an, an even power, it becomes positive. Anytime you have a negative number raised to an odd power, it becomes negative. Okay? So our number of sign changes is only one. So there is one negative real 0. So to understand this, I like to use a table. That's a bad table. OK, so here we have the reals. And here we have the complex. OK, we have real positive, 
we have real negative, and then we have complex. Now, we know that the total always has to equal what? 4. Because the fundamental theorem of algebra, right? OK. So I said one possibility was there to have three real zeros. So if you have three real zeros, it says you have to have one negative zero, right? So we have to have one negative. Is it possible to have any complex then? No. No. So you have zero. What about if I had one real? If I had one real, how many negatives do I have to have? Still one. So then how many complex do I have to have? Two. Two. And guess what? That's all the options I have. That's it. Right. So what's nice about this, what's important about using the Cartes rule signs, yes, Dean? I got two complex and two real. And then when I went to the back and checked, it said four complex and two real. And I, since it's fundamental, I was like, how could that be? It can't be. I'd have to go and take a look at that yeah. individually. So the main important thing.